Hey guys, what's up? It's me, the guy who has no right to talk about speedrunning in Destiny. Here to talk to you about speedrunning in Destiny. As some of you may be aware, a clip from one of my streams was posted to Twitter a while back where I was discussing my opinion about the Worldline skating nerf and how it fits in a larger trend of Destiny being a bad game for speedrunning. The reception of that opinion was mixed. I offended a lot of people, but you know what? I stand by it. It's not like I brought it up to stir the pot and deliberately upset people. I brought it up to air out my own frustrations with the changes, but then I got hung up on my personal problems with the speedrun community instead of staying focused on the bigger picture, which is that Destiny does not like being speedrun. Speedrun. Speedran. One of those is right. My point is that speedrunners are like koalas. That's right, koala bears. The unofficial mascot of Australia, because the actual national animal of Australia is the red kangaroo, which is like a normal kangaroo, but red, although not necessarily. Now, you're probably wondering why I would say that Destiny speedrunners are like koalas. To be honest, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory, but the last time I said something I thought was self-explanatory, I got called fat on the internet, so this time I'll explain myself. To understand this metaphor, we need to first understand the koala bear. A koala bear's diet consists almost entirely of eucalyptus leaves, which, coincidentally, are poisonous and have almost no nutritional value. The eucalyptus tree, from an evolutionary standpoint, makes it exceedingly obvious that it does not want to be eaten. So what does a koala bear do? It counter-evolves a unique gastrointestinal tract called a cecum to eat those leaves anyway because the koala is not about to be told what to do. The koala will then spend 22 hours a day in rest to compensate for this rebellion against evolution because it just doesn't get enough energy to do anything else except occasionally call someone fat on the internet. Much like the eucalyptus tree, Destiny makes it abundantly clear that it is not meant to be speedrun, and yet there are players who evolve a proverbial cecum, or more likely some form of mild neurosis, and speedrun it anyway. And I know, I know, there is someone out there who is already typing up a scathing response to this video, but just to be crystal clear, if you are a Destiny speedrunner, that's fantastic. Go you. You are probably a better player than I am, and I don't want to get in the way of what brings you joy on Destiny. I can't tell you what to think. I'm just making content to procrastinate actually playing the game, baby! Let me just point out some of the more egregious things, and right at the top of that list is the world line skating nerf. Sword mechanics were recently changed, but the new ones are not incompatible with how world line skating used to work. Even though it didn't hurt anything in standard play, and nobody at all was asking for it to be nerfed, and even knowing that it was a staple for speedruns and speedrunners were immediately protesting the change once it was hinted at, it still got removed, for no reason other than that it was not put in the game on purpose. With as little shade thrown as possible, this is actually the behavior of a control freak. Bungie didn't notice Worldline because players were cheesing with it for extra loot, they didn't notice because players were soaring through the glory rankings with it, they didn't notice because players were complaining about it nonstop on Twitter, they just saw someone having fun with the game, and since it didn't follow the Bungie prescribed fun methodology guidelines, they decided it had to be fixed. I almost want to know how that conversation went. Hey Mike, so we noticed that some players are using Worldline on their Warlocks to go really fast, and we need you to fix it so they can't do that. How, are they like, skipping activities to get loot way faster than they're supposed to? Basically, they just glide after heavy attacking off a ledge and they're like, oof, flying through the air, but no, it's not insanely fast cheater speed or anything, they're mostly using it to get faster clears of activities, usually after they've already got their weekly loot. Uh, it's pretty much only the 1% is doing it. But why is that a problem then? That sounds awesome. No, Mike, it is not awesome. They're making a mockery of our franchise. Yeah, but it doesn't sound like it's hurting anyone. Mike, fix the sword. The whole thing is super embarrassing for the studio, we didn't want them to go that fast. Can I just make it so hunters and titans can do it too? Oh my god, Mike, no, that's not what we originally intended. We need to make all the classes feel the same in a bad way. At this point, if we know anything about Bungie, it's that they are diametrically opposed to the teachings of our lord and savior, Bob Ross. We just have to sort of make a decision where we want the little stream to come from. Maybe back in here. And I know this is going to look like we're destroying everything. Don't worry about it. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Nice try, Bob. There's no such thing as a happy accident. You just ruined those bushes in your painting, you amateur. Everybody knows that nothing good ever happens intentionally, and literally everything intentional is great. Same goes for relic skating and normal sword skating, too. These mechanics were completely harmless and just made movement feel better for warlocks using them. If we're being serious, it's pretty obvious that the world line nerf was an indirect casualty of a change to the warlock glide mechanic universally. But that doesn't change the point that Bungie's approach to the situation was to squash the outlier, even though it was well liked and harmless, because it didn't fit their grand design. Thanks to these changes, Scorch the Past speedruns are now dreadful, or to put it in Bungie Approved's terms, working as intended. But it's not like that act of resistance to technical gameplay tricks is the only thing that makes it a bad speedrunning game. Reason number two is that you can't access previous patches. The moment Bungie changes anything in game balance, all old speedruns are retired categories. Changes like adding Warlock's air move, 
the removal of auto loading from Rally Barricade and Luna Rifts, reload speed not affecting Honed Edge Reset, fixing out of bound skips and Pit of Heresy, changing the stacking rules for 1-2 punch, and so on, changes in many cases objectively speed up or slow down the possible completion time for activities. You can't go back and do it how it was done before, so just about every speedrun category in the game lives and dies within the cycle of a balance pass. So basically what I'm saying is, if you enjoyed the Scourge of the Past speedruns that used to be done, that's just too bad, no happy accidents. You amateur. Take for instance my favorite speedrun category in Destiny 2, which is the Solo Shattered Throne speedrun. The current world record is a 7 minute 23 second run by Clawtivity, link in the description, in which he uses both Worldline and Reload enabled Honed Edge to achieve his time, not to mention a bunch of other cool tactics. It's actually a cool video, you should watch it. Would you like to know how many players are trying to beat this run though? None. Because it's unbeatable now, and everyone who speedruns knows it, the category is just gone. You can even see in the description of the video how he says, The run can 100% be sub 7, but with the expected Worldline nerf, I'm not sure how that will happen. It's kind of amazing, even though the video is only two months old, it still serves as recorded evidence of a time before Bungie had entirely crushed speedrunners' dreams. Cool, right? And that's not even to mention things like strikes rotating weekly, secret mission singes rotating weekly, the curse cycle originally making Shattered Throne available once every three weeks, and Leviathan raid encounters rotating weekly. You can't even necessarily attempt runs when you want to, and in the case of something like Nightfalls, it could take months for them to come back. And I think reason number three is my favorite, which is that Destiny is a persistent world that is affected by your connection to the internet. Now I understand this may be a controversial opinion, but I guess I'm just going to put all my cards on the table. I don't think that your internet speed should be a factor in a speedrun. Remember when you could keep Crota down by pulling your ethernet cord? Speedrun strat. Remember when you could use a net limiter during the Queen's Walk section of Last Wish Raid to walk straight to the end in one go? Speedrun strat. Remember when you could throttle your own internet to rig the Guardian game so Titans fly to first place? Speed- wait, what? Wow, that was a quick response. That's... cool. Still looks like something's really wrong when Titans are consistently taking this huge lead every day at reset, but uh, at least this particular thing isn't working, apparently. I, now I don't know what to think. I guess Titans are just really dedicated to bounties. I mean, really, leave it to the game where lagging in PvP is somehow a huge advantage under the right circumstances to also allow lagging in speedruns to somehow be an advantage. But not to worry, we can put this in its own category, like any percent or tool assisted, because obviously those categories apply well to the landscape of Destiny. Speedruns do this kind of thing to go as fast as possible all the time in other games, but as I said, controversial opinion, I would hope we could all agree that the way it's done in Destiny is pretty lame. It feels much more like the labels are slapped on because they don't fit in a legitimate 100% run than because they do fit a different category. I mean, what if someone's internet was actually just awful? Does that mean they're not allowed to do speedruns? That would not be very fair for Void Smiley Face. And then there are barriers to entry, like, if you wanted to speedrun the Grandmaster Nightfall on Insight Terminus 100%, you'd need to have reached level 1025 to enter the activity, and let's just assume Ariana's Vow is the meta option for the fastest strategy, what do you do if you didn't play during Shadowkeep? Nothing! You don't get Ariana's Vow until Bungie puts it back in the loophole somewhere, you amateur. So if all these factors are in the way of having a good, healthy speedrunning platform, then if people are still doing them, they must have some really fantastic tactics to make up for those downsides, right? Let's do a quick side-by-side -side comparison of an any percent run of the most recent Grandmaster Nightfall versus an any percent run of Super Mario 64's entire game, starting with Mario. So you'll notice that in order to access the first fight without stars, the speedrunner has to use some pretty technical tricks and glitches to get past the locked doorways. On the other hand, a Destiny speedrunner doing a Grandmaster Insight Terminus will have to carefully aim a smoke bomb with expert precision and timing to sneak past a wave of dangerous Vex. This kind of nuance is really only possible if you played for years and years, and quite honestly, you know, I think it might be best to watch that one more time in slow motion, so we can really see the detail. Yeah. Okay, now next up, we'll compare Mario going into the next boss stage, as the Grandmaster Nightfall requires a fire team to punch through those defenses. As you can see, the Mario speedrunner is doing pretty much the same trick as before. He's basically got one move that he just uses whenever he needs to get past a wall, and that's about it. Meanwhile, since Cabal are vastly more intelligent than Vex, the fire team on Nessus has to use not one, but two meticulously placed smoke bombs with an incredibly unforgiving window of two to six seconds in order to defeat this massive barrier colossus by running past him without looking. I think my point is pretty clear. Destiny speedruns have an insane technical skill gap that's just completely unattainable for most players, which really isn't fair in a speedrunning scene. How is your average Joe supposed to do that? 
Oh, but would you look at that. The clock just rolled over and it appears opposite minute has come to an end and we're back to normal. On top of the fact that using camo to just walk right past enemies isn't the most exciting strategy, there are plenty of aspects built into Destiny speedrunning that are just openly anti-skill. Sometimes one of your fire team members will fall and you'll just keep walking forwards without them because the time loss from that mistake is negligible after they get pulled forward. The joining allies mechanic ensures that the fire team chain is as strong as its strongest link, which is a really weird, very forgiving thing for a speedrun. Now, somebody could disagree with that being a bad thing, but to me, speedruns are cool specifically because they are extremely precise and unforgiving. When there are mechanics in place to forgive slip-ups so much that it can save not just normal runs of a Grandmaster Nightfall, but speedruns of a Grandmaster Nightfall, it feels like speedrunning on training wheels. And just to return back to another point, Bungie doesn't like for technical tricks to outplay their mechanics, so if you were to find a glitch that allowed for faster but extremely difficult raid clears, it would probably be fixed. Remember when you used to be able to dupe the ball by swapping weapons as the circle completed to dunk it during the plate defense and pit of heresy for speedrunning, but then Bungie patched that and made it easier than it was before? Hilarious. But my point was supposed to be that Bungie is at least trying to put a skill ceiling in place where the absolute cap in skill and speed is within their working as intended umbrella. In other words, Bungie are the traffic cops and they are going to enforce the speed limit at a NASCAR race, which is a perfect analogy in every way. Okay, so I think I've probably talked about this enough. There are definitely plenty of specific points I haven't brought up, so if you would like me to do another video on this, that would be cool. But if you could just do me a favor and bring those up for me in the comments, that would be great and I could stop making videos. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Remember not to click anything else on this page, especially the subscribe button. Be careful, just hit the red X in the corner and that's it. Okay guys.